Welcome to Ask the Expert with noted radio host Steve Sleeper. Each week, Steve interviews entrepreneurs and professionals and shares their intriguing stories of success and service. Now, here's radio veteran Steve Sleeper. Welcome to another edition of Ask the Expert. And uh, today, my guest is Brad Litchfield. Brad is an attorney with Hutchison Cox in Eugene, Oregon. Brad, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me on your show. Oh, I love having you here. So t- tell me a little bit about Hutchison Cox. You're based in Eugene, Oregon, but to tell me a little bit about the law firm and, and uh, tell me about yourself as well. Great. Thanks. Well, hopefully hopefully you can't hear the Oregon rain pounding on my, on my window as we talk, but uh, Hutchison Cox, it's a law firm in little old Eugene, Oregon, been around a, a long time uh, since 1970. Um, we have a, a fairly diverse practice in Eugene, uh, and I've been at this firm since 2003. Um, I practiced as a lawyer. Uh, I was admitted as a lawyer in 1993 in British Columbia, believe it or not. I practiced up there for a few years, and then my wife and I decided to move down to Oregon, and we've been here ever since. And I, I've been practice, I practice family law in, in British Columbia, and I practice family law here, so uh, I've helped a lot of people in, in tough times in their life, and I still, after all these years, uh, I, I love doing it. I love helping people figure out some of the most challenging questions in their lives, so, so that's a little bit about me. And, and family law is, is to, to a large degree, handling divorces. Now, you and I spoke for, for quite a while offline, and, and one of the things that you mentioned is, is most, most folks wait longer than they should to get a divorce. Uh, tell me about that, and tell me about some of the things. If, if somebody's thinking about getting a divorce, which is, you know, it, it's a tough time in their lives, but what, what should they be looking out for? Yeah, uh, I, 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 I think it is true that people wait longer than they should to get a divorce mo- most of the time. And that's not always, but most of the time they do that. And that's uh, a lot of the time, time they see, oh, I want to I want to stay together for the kids. And or, I, uh, you know, I, is it right? Is now the right time? Or the inertia is significant on doing something like this a divorce i mean it's 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 a very difficult decision and it it's packed with so much emotion people generally wait longer than they should and and what my experience is people um people come up with a what i'll call a triggering event uh somebody clears out the bank account or somebody moves out or somebody there's an incident of incident of physical violence or there's an incident of uh, they just, I can't take it anymore. Uh, and even though they have known for a long time that the, the relationship is not uh, positive or productive, they, they, they wait too long. And so I, I think th- that's something that, that people need to, to think about. Um, you, you know, when, when, you're, when you're contemplating this, I think you need to be prepared to brace yourself. It's a very emotional situation it's a there it's it's a very difficult process to go through but it is important that you figure out what what your priorities are and you maintain those priorities and and foremost in in those priorities in my mind should be not messing with your kids mm-hmm Absolutely. So. Yeah. Well, and and we were talking again offline. I, I went through a divorce, I don't know, 35 years ago, 36 years ago. So it's a lot of water under the bridge. But I, I know exactly what you're saying. And I empathize. And, and the big thing at the time, and I, I had a two year old daughter that I ended up with custody of was, um, how do I do this? How do I take care of uh, my daughter and and I, you know I might have been a little bit of an unusual situation in, in that I ended up being a single dad, where in most cases I suppose it's uh, uh, the other way around. You know where mom's going to be the primary caregiver, but dad's still going to be involved. Um, and, and and what what do you, what do you typically see? Is it a joint custody situation or what typically happens? You know that's a that's a really important question. I, I, a, a big question. One of one of the assumptions that you have that for, from the 80s, it sounds like when you got divorced, that is different with 2016 as we sit here, is there really is not a presumption that moms are always the primary 
caregiver at the end of the day. Oh, I, I mean, okay. I can honestly say that. You know, some people say, oh, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. It really is the mom. But not really anymore. Judges, good judges, uh, will select the parent that's the better parent. And sometimes that's dad. We've have, we have changing roles in society. Dads are more regularly staying home with kids. But even if a dad doesn't stay home with a kid uh, and mom does, that does not mean that mom is going to get custody. And so custody is a, is a – it's different in, in different jurisdictions. I practice in Oregon. Custody means who is the person that makes the key decisions for the child. So medical, religious, educational. Um, that's what custody – and there can be sole custody or joint custody. Sole custody is where – one parent makes those decisions to the exclusion of the other parent. And joint custody is where both parents, in theory, make those decisions together. Um, and, and, and so, yes, custody is important, but it's not as big a deal as you think it is. Uh, a, a lawyer that I respect always talks about the crown of custody. How much are you going to pay for that crown of custody to say, I dominated, right? Mm -hmm. I I squashed the other person like a bug and I got custody. Um, joint custody is good. Moms and dads who have joint custody are generally more involved with the children. Um, but but that comes at a cost. I mean, can can you joint parent with this person? Some of some of us uh, have have friends or we unfortunately are involved in a situation where we can't we can't talk with the other person. They make bad decisions. They are in a dangerous situation. So you don't want to, you know, push upon your ch child a joint custody arrangement with a crazy person. Yeah, right. So joint or soul is a very, very difficult decision that you want to talk to your lawyer about. But really, where the rubber hits the road with kids is not custody. It's not custody. Really where it is, is parenting time. Some jurisdictions, they call it visitation. But when are you with your kid? And, you know, is it 50-50? Is it weekends for dad or weekends for mom? And I think courts are moving more towards a 50-50 parenting time and away from the every other weekend uh, parent, alternate, alternating weekends and two, week, two weeks in the summer. That, that, that's uncommon in the jurisdiction where I practice. And that may be surprising to people. So. Well, it, it, it's, it's somewhat surprising to me. Um, you know, I got divorced a long time ago and remarried a long time ago, but, but um, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And it makes a lot of sense because it's really not about mom and dad. It's about the kids first and foremost, right? That is, that is absolutely so true. Uh, uh, again, a, a person that I respect, a local judge here in Eugene uh, will often lecture people and say, your kid did not choose to get divorced. Your kid did not choose to fall out of love with your partner. Uh -huh. Don't penalize your kid for doing that. And I think that's the best advice you can do. Don't pollute your child's relationship with you or with the other parent by talking trash, by you know the subtle jabs, the, the trying to get the, the kid on your side. That is the worst thing you can do for your child because even if your divorce is amicable, it's traumatic for your kids. It's traumatic for your kids, and, and they will remember it for the rest of your life, and they'll hold it against you for the rest of your life if you make it horrible for them. I guess one thing I, I, I think is super important that people remember is children's brains are not developed to the extent that we adults' brains are developed. Hopefully our brains are developed, right? Yeah. But 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 the children's brain is not developed so they perceive things differently than than adults do mm -hmm. and they will blame themselves for mom and dad splitting up and so in a perfect world mom and dad sit down with the kids and say boy we sure love you children you are the light of our lives but mom and dad think it's healthier for mom and dad and for you as kids if we if we change our structure a little bit so that mom and dad live in different places so everybody can be happy. And, you know, that kind of a discussion. I mean, I'm, I'm pretending I'm a psycho psychotherapist here or a therapist, but the divorce cases that I work with that are least damaging for children are those cases where, where, where parents approach the divorce in a way as to not penalize the children.
Well, and then as it relates to the parents, I suppose there's all kinds of issues of character and emotions. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it, it, it's it's a tough one um, because you know you gotta you kind of be got to be prepared for the emotional Armageddon that that is a divorce. You know, at the end of the day, perhaps, hopefully not, but you'll be mad at your ex spouse. You'll be perhaps mad at the judge, mad at the mad at the other lawyer, mad at your own lawyer. And you've got to approach uh, approach this by saying, I need to move to a different part of my life. I need to get this divorce done. I need to do it by maintaining my own character. I need to maintain my own standards. But I'm not going to give away the farm on this one. There are some things that I absolutely will not tolerate. And that's why it's important to have a good lawyer, somebody that can say, yeah, I wouldn't tolerate that either. You need to stand your ground on that one. Uh, Those are things like child safety issues or anything but a fair division of assets, except, you know, there's some times where we don't want to do a fair division of assets, but you need a lawyer to be able to say, we're standing our ground on this one, but we're, we're, we're not going to fight over the stupid things. We're not going to fight over the unimportant things. I had a couple spend, I I promise you, I bet you they spent $10,000 $10,000 fighting over, well, that may be a bit of an exaggeration, but close to that, fighting over the family roaster. You know, this is where they put the, the turkey in at Christmas time. And this was, this was such an emotional issue. And this was when I was a young lawyer and I didn't have control of my client to say, stop it, move yeah. on with your life. And, and so that's why I'm saying it's good to have a lawyer that can that can tell you, yes, you, that is a that is something we want to stand our ground in, or at the same time say you're being ridiculous. Move on, unless you want to pay me thousands of dollars for something that's unimportant. You know, move on. And and as I've said, the emotional carnage that comes from a divorce can be made way way worse by people taking unrealistic or. or positions or or positions on things that are that are not helpful so yeah 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 yeah, yeah. And, and 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 i think uh, for, for those that are going through or thinking about a divorce that's it's important to remember do you ever have to go to mediation i mean do, do you ever get to such an impasse that nobody can agree on anything uh does that ever happen yeah i mean that's that's also a really good thing and mediation has changed over the years too. You wouldn't think divorce process processes would change, but most most good lawyers use mediation as a first option as opposed to a last, op- last option nowadays. Um, good, skillful, experienced lawyers will say, hey, we can, we can figure this out way better if we craft our own resolution rather than if we have a judge uh, craft a resolution for us. Judges don't know anything about you or your your partner, your spouse, your kids. And they, uh, I had one judge tell me once in the in court. He says, "I'm going to make this decision with an axe. Yeah, I'm going to chop things right down the middle with an axe. But if you want to, if you mediate this, you can do it with a scalpel. Still painful, you know. Still causing, you know, the split. But it's much more precise, and you can you can." You can do a more effective division of assets that's more carefully tailored to your needs um, if you mediate. And so good lawyers will mediate uh, at the front end of the case to avoid the cost and uncertainty of of a of a trial, because you don't know what the judge is going to do in some jurisdictions like my jurisdiction. The judge doesn't know anything about your case till the morning of trial and so no. you expect this person to, yeah, I mean, it's 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 very difficult for people because you expect this person to make decisions about the most important things on in in your life and your spouse's life without really knowing anything about you and that is the uncertainty that a mediation can avoid and you can do that there's lots of ways to do it but i it's it's an excellent question that you asked me is mediation a good way to go? And a hundred percent of the time, if I can, I'm mediating cases rather than taking them in front of in front of a judge. One of the terms that you used when you were answering the the question on mediation was uh, "good lawyer." Talk about the importance of a uh, having a good lawyer represent you during during a, a divorce. Yeah, I, I, my, my I was up visiting my my 
brother the other day and he says, oh, yeah, that divorce lawyers, I mean, it doesn't really matter, does it? And it really does matter. Um, good lawyers are the problem solvers. Um, you know, bad, bad lawyers stir the pot. Uh, or where bad lawyer, lawyers are inexperienced, I mean, good and bad, that's not a great way to explain it, but capable lawyers, um, capable lawyers are going to avoid the fight except in circumstances where they really do need do need to fight. Some things you do need to stand your ground on. Sure. Uh, you know, the bad lawyers are going to, you know, like I say, stir the pot. They're going to wing it. They're not going to be prepared. They're not going to know what's going on in your case and with your life and with your family and with your finances, because that's a very big part of many divorce cases. A good lawyer is going to take the time that he or she needs to, to know the facts, know what's going on, and give you experienced advice. Uh, and I'm not saying you need to hire the most expensive lawyer in town. And sometimes those most expensive lawyers in town are expensive because it's their own ego. But ask around, find somebody that takes the approach to the case that you want to take. And wh what, what I mean by that is, if you know that you have to go to trial, if you know absolutely that you have to go to trial, get a lawyer that that's good in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. But even though you might think you've got to go to trial, good lawyers can avoid a trial and the uncertainty that comes with that trial. And, and so my advice, interview a couple lawyers, ask around, um, talk to people who have gone through this sort of experience before and say, tell me about your lawyer. Tell me what you liked about your lawyer. Tell me what you didn't like about, about your lawyer. There are resources online that you can, you can, you know, Get some information about a lawyer in your area. Uh, I think a local lawyer is better than the lawyer from, you know, 50 miles, 100 miles away who's, who's in the big city uh, simply because local lawyers know the local bench, know the local judges, and they have experience with, with that judge in that county in that courtroom. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's super important that you find somebody that 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 fits with you, that you like, that you can talk to, but that knows what he or she is doing and can tell you when you're being ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My wife does that a lot now. <laughs> it tells me when I'm being ridiculous. <laughs> right. so it's just, well, either that or she ignores me. But, that's right. That's but right. We, well, it, we, it's we, interesting we, that you say that on cases. I won't reveal my, my client's name, but I go to my wife or my friends. And I say, what do you think about this? And and they'll give the kind of the real world, pers world perspective on things and say, yeah, that sounds dumb. No, that doesn't make sense. That's not fair. Yeah. And and most divorce cases honestly should make sense. You know, most divorce cases should be reasonable and straightforward. But a normal everyday person that's not a lawyer would say, yeah. Yeah, that's that's right. Uh, good point. Yeah, because uh, the old forest and the trees analogy, it, it is good to get uh, a disinterested third party to give you your your opinion on that, their opinion on that. So yeah, yeah, yeah that's great. That, well, Brad, how how if, if somebody's interested in contacting you, how do they do that? Sure, I'm in Eugene, Oregon. You can give me a call at uh, area code 541-686-9160. We'll do a conflicts check before we meet with you. Or you can send me an email at brad at eugene, E-U-G-E-N-E, -E, law.com. And uh, eugenelaw.com is the website. Yep. And if you want to look up Brad there, he's got a biography. You can get a little more information. And uh, today we've been talking about the ins and outs of divorce and family law with attorney Brad Litchfield of Hutchison Cox in Eugene, Oregon. Brad, thanks very much. Hey, it is absolutely my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Ask the Expert with Steve Sleeper. Join us next time as entrepreneurs and professionals share their intriguing stories of success and service.